625 miles of interconnected fractures cutting through the Earth's crust, absorbing a quarter of the motion between two continental plates, capable of earthquakes that rewrite maps and reshape coastlines. And until recently, most people had never heard of it. They call it the Walker Lane Fault System. It stretches from Southern California through Nevada to Southern Oregon, running parallel to the famous San Andreas Fault, but east of the Sierra Nevada. While the San Andreas gets the headlines, the documentaries, the disaster movies, Walker Lane has been quietly doing something that scientists are only now beginning to fully understand. It is becoming the new boundary between the Pacific and North American plates. GPS sensors tracking ground motion with millimeter precision reveal something different. Walker Lane is absorbing 20 to 25% of the total motion between the Pacific and North American plates, nearly as much as the San Andreas itself. And unlike the San Andreas, which is a single continuous fault that we have mapped and studied for over a century, Walker Lane is a complex web of hundreds of interconnected faults that we are only beginning to understand. Scientists at the University of Nevada have run the projections forward. Over tens of millions of years, Walker Lane could overtake the San Andreas entirely, becoming the primary plate boundary. When that happens, everything west of Walker Lane, most of California, including its famous coastline, becomes an island. Nevada becomes oceanfront property. Is this a distant geological curiosity with no immediate relevance? Or is this an active, dangerous fault system capable of major earthquakes that we have dangerously underestimated because it does not fit our mental model of how West Coast tectonics work? To understand what's changing, you have to understand what we thought we knew. The theory of plate tectonics revolutionized geology in the 1960s. Scientists realized the Earth's surface is not solid, but broken into massive plates that move, collide, and slide past each other. The San Andreas Fault, running 800 miles through California from the Salton Sea to Cape Mendocino, became the textbook example of a transform boundary, where two plates slide horizontally past each other. The Pacific Plate moves northwest relative to North America at about 46 millimeters per year, roughly the rate your fingernails grow. Over millions of years, this motion has displaced rocks hundreds of miles. The fault is visible from space, a scar cutting through California's landscape. Earthquakes on the San Andreas, like the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and the 1989 Loma Prieta event, are legendary. The big one, a magnitude 7.8 or larger earthquake on the southern San Andreas, is considered inevitable. This framework shaped everything. Building codes in California account for San Andreas motion. Emergency response plans assume San Andreas earthquakes. Seismologists monitor the San Andreas with dense networks of sensors. The fault is studied, mapped, and understood in remarkable detail. It is the primary threat, the main event, the boundary that matters. But about 125 miles east, running parallel to the San Andreas through the Basin and Range Province, is a different system. Walker Lane does not appear on most maps that do not specifically focus on tectonics. It does not cut through major cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco. It is not a single dramatic fault line you can see from space. It is a messy, complex zone of deformation stretching 625 miles from the Mojave Desert through Nevada to Southern Oregon. For decades, Walker Lane was considered a secondary feature, a minor accommodation zone for plate motion. Interesting to specialists, perhaps, but not a primary concern. The real action was on the San Andreas. Then scientists started looking more closely at the GPS data. The United States Geological Survey, universities across California and Nevada, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory operate networks of GPS stations 
that measure ground motion with extraordinary precision. These are not the GPS units in your phone. They are scientific instruments capable of detecting movement measured in millimeters per year. When researchers analyzed decades of GPS data from the Great Basin and Sierra Nevada region, they found something unexpected. Walker Lane was not absorbing a trivial amount of plate motion. It was absorbing 20 to 25% of the total relative motion between the Pacific and North American plates. That is nearly as much as the San Andreas Fault itself. This was not a minor accommodation zone. This was a major tectonic boundary in the making. LIDAR, light detection and ranging technology allowed scientists to map the landscape with unprecedented detail, stripping away vegetation to reveal the bare earth. What they found was evidence of faults everywhere. Not a single fault like the San Andreas, but hundreds of faults. Some long, some short, some connected, some isolated, all accommodating tectonic motion in a broad zone of deformation. The surveys exposed hundreds of fractures across the landscape. Trenching studies, where geologists dig across fault lines to examine layers of sediment disrupted by past earthquakes, confirmed that Walker Lane was not just creeping silently. It had a history of major surface rupturing earthquakes. Faults that looked inactive had moved violently in the past. The system was capable of destructive events. And then, on July 4th and 5th, 2019, Walker Lane announced itself with authority. The Ridgecrest earthquake sequence began with a magnitude 6.4 foreshock on July 4th, 2019, followed by a magnitude 7.1 mainshock on July 5, 2019. It was the strongest earthquake in California in two decades. The quakes occurred at the southern end of the Walker Lane system in a remote area northwest of Ridgecrest, California. They ruptured multiple faults, some of which had never been mapped. Over the following weeks, more than 1,200 aftershocks were recorded. Satellite imagery and field surveys revealed surface ruptures extending for miles, fresh cracks in the earth where the ground had torn apart. The quakes demonstrated something terrifying. Walker Lane faults could jump from one fault to another, creating complex rupture patterns that were difficult to predict. The earthquakes were not confined to a single, well-understood fault. They cascaded through a network of interconnected fractures. No one died in the Ridgecrest quakes, primarily because they occurred in a sparsely populated area. But the shaking was violent, the ground motion extreme. If similar earthquakes occurred near Reno, Carson City, or other population centers along Walker Lane, the consequences would be catastrophic. Scientists scrambled to understand what had happened. With every layer of analysis, seismic data, GPS measurements, satellite interferometry, and field observations, the picture grew clearer and more concerning. Walker Lane was not a future threat. It was an active, dangerous fault system capable of major earthquakes right now. The human cost is not hypothetical. It is a matter of when, not if. Reno, Nevada's third largest city, with over 250,000 people in the metro area, sits directly atop the Walker Lane system. The city has grown rapidly over the past few decades, with new housing developments, casinos, and infrastructure built with varying levels of earthquake resilience. Many older buildings predate modern seismic codes. A major earthquake on faults beneath or near Reno would cause widespread damage. Carson City, Nevada's capital, sits in a basin surrounded by Walker Lane faults. Death Valley, Mammoth Lakes, and communities throughout the Eastern Sierra are all within the active deformation zone. Highway 395, a major north-south route through California and Nevada, runs directly through Walker Lane territory. A major earthquake could sever this critical transportation corridor. The 2019 Ridgecrest earthquakes damaged buildings, roads, and infrastructure in a rural area. Scale that up to a magnitude 7-plus earthquake near a major population center, and the scenario becomes nightmarish. Collapsed buildings, severed utilities, fires from broken gas lines, hospitals overwhelmed. Emergency response becomes complicated by damaged roads and compromised communication systems. 
insurance companies are beginning to reassess risk in the region. Property values could shift as awareness of Walker Lane's threat grows. Earthquake insurance. Premiums may rise. Some areas might become uninsurable, as has happened in parts of California near the San Andreas. But the long-term implications are even more profound. Scientists at the University of Nevada, Reno have modeled what happens if Walker Lane continues to absorb an increasing percentage of plate motion. Over millions of years, 10, 20, or 50 million years into the future, Walker Lane could become the dominant plate boundary. The San Andreas, currently the main event, could become secondary or even inactive. When that happens, the geometry of the West Coast changes fundamentally. Everything west of Walker Lane, most of California, including the Coast Ranges, the Central Valley, the Sierra Nevada foothills, and the Pacific coastline, becomes a detached, crustal block. California becomes an island, slowly drifting northwest as the Pacific Plate carries it away from the continent. Nevada, currently landlocked in the Great Basin, becomes oceanfront property. The coastline shifts inland by hundreds of miles. The maps we use today become geological artifacts, relics of a different configuration of continents. This is not science fiction. This is the logical conclusion of current tectonic processes projected forward. Plate boundaries shift, and they evolve. The San Andreas itself is relatively young in geological terms, only about 20 to 30 million years old. Before it, other faults accommodated plate motion. After it, Walker Lane may take over. The timescale is vast, tens of millions of years, far beyond human civilization's lifespan. But the process is active now. The Earth is cracking, shifting, reorganizing itself beneath our feet. On paper, the response to Walker Lane's discovery looked comprehensive. The United States Geological Survey upgraded its seismic monitoring in the region. New GPS stations were installed. LIDAR surveys mapped previously unknown faults. Universities in Nevada and California launched research programs to study Walker Lane's structure earthquake history, and seismic hazard. After the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquakes, emergency management agencies in Nevada and California updated their earthquake response plans. Building codes in some jurisdictions were strengthened. Public education campaigns informed residents about earthquake preparedness, securing furniture, stockpiling supplies, and practicing drop, cover, and hold drills. The Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology published detailed fault maps. Researchers excavated trenches across faults to date past earthquakes and estimate recurrence intervals. Seismologists developed models of potential earthquake scenarios, calculating expected ground-shaking intensities for different magnitude events on different faults. On paper, everything looked sound. The science was advancing. The public was being informed infrastructure was being strengthened. Initial optimism grew that Walker Lane, now recognized, could be managed. The threat was real, but understanding it meant we could prepare, adapt, and build resilience. But every attempt to understand Walker Lane revealed new complexities. Unlike the San Andreas, which is a single fault you can map, name, and study as a discrete feature, Walker Lane is a zone. Hundreds of faults of varying lengths and orientations, some connected, some not, some capable of rupturing independently, some capable of triggering each other and cascading failures. Mapping this system completely is nearly impossible. Every new LIDAR survey reveals previously unknown faults. Every earthquake exposes structures that weren't in the models. The 2019 Ridgecrest earthquakes demonstrated fault-to-fault -fault jumping where a rupture on one fault triggers rupture on another nearby fault, creating complex, multi-fault earthquakes that are harder to predict and model than single-fault events. If one Walker Lane fault ruptures, could it trigger others? Could a magnitude 6 earthquake become a magnitude 7 by cascading through the network? Scientists realized that the same complexity that makes Walker Lane hard to map also makes it hard to predict. The San Andreas, for all its danger, 
is relatively simple, a single fault with well-understood geometry. You can model rupture scenarios with reasonable confidence. Walker Lane's complexity means more scenarios, more uncertainty, and more ways for earthquakes to surprise us. GPS data showed that strain is not accumulating evenly across Walker Lane. Some sections are locked and storing energy. Others creep slowly, releasing strain without large earthquakes. But which is which, and for how long? The instrumental record is too short. We have had precise GPS measurements for only a few decades. Walker Lane's earthquake cycle could span centuries or millennia. We might be at the beginning, the middle, or the end of a cycle. We do not know. Trenching studies revealed evidence of large PRE historic earthquakes, but dating them precisely is difficult. Radiocarbon dating of disrupted soil layers gives approximate ages. This earthquake happened sometime between 1,200 and 1,500 years ago, but not exact recurrence intervals. Is the next earthquake due tomorrow or in 500 years? The data does not say. Communities within Walker Lane face impossible planning questions. Do you retrofit every building for a major earthquake that might not happen for centuries? Do you restrict development in high-risk zones, tanking property values and limiting growth? Do you invest billions in preparedness for an event that might not occur in anyone's lifetime? The language shifted among scientists and emergency managers. They stopped talking about when a major Walker Lane earthquake would happen and started talking about if and when. The certainty gave way to probability ranges so wide they were nearly meaningless for practical decision-making. Are we actually safer because we know about Walker Lane? Or have we just added another layer of anxiety without gaining the ability to prevent or predict the threat? 625 miles of active faulting, absorbing a quarter of the motion between two continental plates reshaping the future geography of the American West. Walker Lane is not a distant curiosity. It is active now. It is producing earthquakes now. It is deforming the crust, cracking the surface, storing energy that will eventually be released in ground-shaking violence. The 2019 Ridgecrest quakes were a warning, a demonstration of what this system can do in a sparsely populated area. The next earthquake might not be so kind in its location. Millions of people live within Walker Lane's zone of influence. Reno, Carson City, Mammoth Lakes, and communities throughout the Eastern Sierra and Great Basin are built on or near active faults that we are only beginning to understand. The infrastructure, the buildings, the roads, the utilities were designed for a world where the San Andreas was the primary threat. Walker Lane was not in the calculations. The mathematics are inescapable. Tectonic motion does not stop. Plates keep moving. Stress keeps accumulating. Faults will rupture. The only questions are where, when, and how big. Every day, GPS stations measure millimeter scale shifts in the Earth's crust. Every day, seismometers record small earthquakes as faults adjust and stress redistributes. Every day, the gap between our understanding and the system's complexity becomes more apparent. Who pays the price when a major Walker Lane earthquake strikes a population center? What does it mean to live on a fault system that we have dangerously underestimated because it did not fit our mental model of West Coast tectonics? Walker Lane is teaching us that the Earth does not care about our maps, our models, our assumptions. Plate boundaries shift. Faults evolve. The landscape we think is stable is constantly cracking and moving beneath us. The San Andreas will always be famous. The iconic California Fault. The big one everyone fears. But Walker Lane might be the future. The new plate boundary. The fault system that could make Nevada oceanfront and California an island. That future is tens of millions of years away, but the earthquakes that will shape that future are happening now, on a timeline we cannot predict, in a system we are only beginning to understand. The ground is moving. 
The question is whether we will be ready when it moves violently.